Yeah. Um, this uh, coming September, we are holding the first Lio Livestock Biotech Summit, which will be held September uh, 28th and 30th in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Uh, actually, Sioux Falls, South Dakota is the heartland of livestock uh, production. A genetically engineered animal is an animal that we've made a specific mod modification to um, in a very controlled manner in order to achieve a desired trait. We've been uh, controlling the genetics of livestock since they've been domesticated, but this specific technique that allows us to control those modifications uh, has been developed and was developed about 25 years ago. Uh, the benefits of genetic engineering is it allows us to make modifications to the animals that improve animal health and welfare, uh, gives us opportunities to enhance human health, uh, improves the animal's impact on the environment, and it also gives us the ability to change the quality of the food and improve the quality of the food produced by those animals. Um. Genetically engineered animals are regulated by the FDA. The FDA published guidelines in 2009, and the industry supports those guidelines. Those guidelines are made and, and implemented in order to assure the safety and the efficacy of the products developed with GE animals. These are genetically engineered pigs, or GE pigs, and they've been uh, modified through a, a targeted uh, recombination event such that they, their organ cells and tissues are resistant to rejection when transplanted. The calf that's here today is, has been genetically engineered to be resistant to BSE. BSE is more commonly known as mad cow disease. So this animal mitigates the risk of the BSE, particularly in the products from this animal. So serum from this animal uh, would mitigate any risk of BSE or mad cow disease, particularly if that serum is used in the cell culture. I think GE animals, genetically engineered animals, are going to be critical for addressing human health needs in the future. Um, we're, we have a, an aging population, we have a population that is um, requiring uh, replacement uh, organs, tissues, uh, uh, we have dis uh, antibiotic resistance and so we have to address uh, needs for an, on the infectious disease side, uh, for treating diabetes, obesity, uh, a variety of health concerns and organ shortage crises and safer products for human use. Uh, as our blood supply gets contaminated with things like HIV and hepatitis, uh, we can be making these products in a very clean, environmentally controlled uh, livestock animal so that we can make safe products for human therapies with large unmet clinical needs. Uh, I really am curious. And it's going to be a, uh, uh, two parts to our conference. The first part is going to deal with the animal welfare. Uh, we have the new ag guide that has been published uh, and released this year and this will be the first time that they will be presenting the new guide and we are having each one of the uh, chapter uh, authors that will be there to present. And we will all actually be going uh, through each species um, at that particular um, um, part of the conference. At the other half of the conference, uh, we are going to be taught, we have, there, well, there we'll have industry, academia, and the regulatory industries. And there we are going to be talking about genetically engineered animals, uh, the animals that we can see in back of us here. And at that, we're, we're going to have the discussion of the regulatory pathway by which animals can get approved. We also are going to have uh, keynote speakers on the subject of GE animals. We are going to have panels in which they will also uh, uh, discuss their, their pathway through the regulatory uh, uh, pathway. And then also we're going to talk about funding for academia, where they can find the funding for this type of technology.